OCN, Word of God to the World. Praise the Lord. Can you join me in saying that this is the day the Lord has made? It doesn't matter how you woke up this morning. It doesn't matter what is going on in your life. It doesn't matter the challenges you're facing. In fact, the person who will see you out of the challenges is the one who you should say to, thank you that this is the day you have made. And I choose to rejoice. Increasingly, I say to myself, I choose to rejoice. You know, the more I read the Bible and God shows me deeper and deeper, I just find it so refreshing, so freeing, so loving, so being obedient to the word of God to say that this is the, the Lord has made. In fact, sometimes when I have too many challenges, that's when I even begin to shout and sing and praise God. Like today, I've been singing a lot of joyful Christmas songs. I always sing anyway. When I wake up, I sing songs. And sometimes most, I start with scriptures like Psalm 103. Okay, why don't you join me in saying Psalm 103 now? Just the first five verses. And let's bless the name of the Lord. Any version that you feel comfortable with. But I use King James because I was nurtured as a young girl growing up in Africa. In King James, my father loved it. My parents loved it. And most of the Psalms, I put it to heart in King James. And it has really blessed me. I do listen to other passages, um, uh, other translations, but my greatest comfort by the Holy Spirit is the King James Version. So let's go together. And I'm going to look at the word, even though I know it. You know, sometimes we need to just bless God by looking at the passage, you know, instead of just belting it out from our spirit. That's good too. But if we look at it, I believe it has more efficacy. It brings blessings of beneficial permanence more than if we just rattle it from our well, our heart, I would say from my heart, because God has put it, it's something I say several times every day. Learn to feel comfortable with scriptures. There is nothing that can be compared to the word of God. Only God can save us from every deluge, from every uh, challenge of life. I don't know about you, but I, I face daily challenge because I love Jesus and said I will always find a way to discourage us. However, I rejoice because I refuse to be discouraged. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Can you join me? Just say it. Say it. If you don't know it, then say it after me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Yes, yes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. You know, the Lord in the verse 1 and verse 2 is Adonai, the word Adonai. You know, Adonai is one of the several redemptive names of Jesus. So feel comfortable to say it. And you know what? Say it because it's obedient to the word of God. It doesn't matter how you feel. I keep telling you. You don't read the word of God because of how you feel. You read it because it's the best thing that will change your life, renew you, restore you, deliver you, continue to save you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The word is a life unto our feet, a light unto our path and a light unto our feet. Amen. So let's go back. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I just love the way they bolded 
the Lord in King James. And that's Adonai. Oh, my soul. Now, do you know that your soul is not your spirit? Your spirit, soul, and body. Your soul is part of your emotion, which we need to develop. Second part of verse 1, Psalm 103. And all that is within, you see, within me, within us, within you. Bless God's holy name. Bless his holy name. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You know, there's a song that says, Bless the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Bless the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Bless the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Shout, hallelujah. Okay, well, the Holy Spirit is really helping me a lot. Because in myself, I can do nothing. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I'm going to analyze all this. And we just take it and spell it out and allow God to nurture us. You know, what happens with the word is when we meditate in it, God visits us immensely and blesses us and takes away sickness and disease and every evil. Father, I just bless you for your love, what you're doing even with this recording. It's your doing, and we give you thanks. Father, we bless you that those who trust in you can never be put to shame. Never. So, verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. I mean, uh, bless, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know, don't forget. Many times I ask people what they read, they say they forgot. Then you don't have the blessing that goes with it. If you forget it, it's going to take a long time because before that blessing manifests, especially when you have a special need, you'll be thinking, ah, what did I read? Many times I ask people, say, what, so what did you get from church today? And they don't remember. Because the word is not hidden in their heart. They just go to church, clap their hands, clap your hands. I love the Lord. Enjoy physical fellowship with other Christians. But the most important from all the fellowship is the word of God that sustains us. I could not live without the word of God. I don't know about you. And I can never get enough of it. Soon after I finish reading it, I want, I'm hungry for it. I want to read it again. Because I have so many needs spiritually in my life to be able to help so many people. By the way, I was in London for Thanksgiving. Now, the British people, UK, all of them together, they don't celebrate Thanksgiving as such. But I have a lot of family in London. And also, I grew up in London. I went to school. I went to London when I was, like, in my teens. I know London very well. But when I left London to go back to Africa, to Nigeria, to start my ministry, I've never really spent the time I spent in London this time, like two weeks with family. I wanted to go. They wouldn't let me go. They said, please, pastor. Please, sister. Please, auntie. Can you stay a little longer? We we'll just enjoy the way you minister. You love on us. You just spend quality time with us. And I had to increase my stay by four days. That's all I could do because I was coming to California to do this program. So um, it was such a blessing to go back to London, to put back, to nurture, and to be nurtured. You know, it's two ways. 
I really had a very intimate time with my family. They enjoyed me so much. In fact, they made the trip possible. And guess what? I enjoyed them. We had a blast. We had a wonderful time. And we are all, by the grace of God, Christians. So we shared fellowship together. Verse 3. Who forgiveth all my iniquities, all thy iniquities, thy, you, us. This is King James. Who forgives all my iniquities. You can say, who forgives all my sins. Iniquity is sin. You know, when I teach my kids, uh, young people at church, I give them simple language, like from Message Bible, and I'm going to use different um, versions just to bring it home to those who are not used to. Antiquity language, antiquity. You know, King James is kind of becoming antiquity because something like um, love in uh, John 3.16 he says charity. I don't think any young person, or let me say many people, I can't assume, there are still young people who are raised in the King James. I don't think many of them know that charity is not just giving money to benevolent organizations. Charity is also, the word is from the word Agape, love, is old English. It doesn't have the same meaning it used to have when I was growing up. But it's still the same word. Some people use it. I listened to a preacher who used the word charity. Oh, but that's okay. I'm sure there is an audience they are reaching. But I believe that the word love, which is agape in the Greek language, is the right word, and it's, we're talking of the unconditional love of the Lord. And I was going to, um, and at best, I, I just say, at this season, I mean, this program can go on any time, because I have a tract that says Christmas at all times. So even though um, this program is around those beautiful wonderful season of Christmas. Every season belongs to Jesus. And you look at it that way, you will see the reason why Jesus came and this is the season. I don't say happy holidays. I don't say that. And thank God that there are many, many organizations like the Southwest, I have to mention them because they are exceptionally. I was traveling, they said happy Christmas. Some stores say happy Christmas. And that is where it belongs. I, John 3.16 says, and I'm going to pass, uh, mention it in passing because there's a lot to glean about John 3.16. I'm getting it in my tablets. John 3.16 and 17. Let's look at it in, in King James for now. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, thank you for helping me to find it quickly. So I can, um, John 3, 16. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I hope you are enjoying this. We are Adonai Bible Center Church. We are based in Massachusetts. But it just so pleases God that he makes it possible for me to travel to California to do this program. Because the station is a Christian station, OCN. And so they encourage me and I encourage them. It's a partnership. You know, you cannot do um, church alone. Jesus couldn't do it alone. He chose not to do it alone. He trained 12 disciples and others. And then they, they were, the fire spread. And the damn Pentecost, you know what happened. How many thousands gave their life to Jesus Christ? And then it became 3,000, 5,000. And today, Christianity is the greatest force. Jesus is the greatest force in the world. I don't care what people say about other religions, that they are growing. That's just, they are talking of 
uh, just saying it to discourage people. Christianity is the greatest and is growing and people all over the world. So John 3.16 says, and the season of Christmas brings us back to what God did. I want to read it first in King James. For God so loved the world. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This is King James. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. No, he didn't. But that the world through him, who is him, Jesus Christ, might be saved. No, God doesn't condemn anybody. So at this time of Christmas, or this season, or any season, Come, let us adore him on bended knees. Let us worship before the Lord, our maker, for he is God. And we are his people. Are you his people today? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Do you know that there is no way to God that will lead us to heaven except through Jesus Christ? Please refuse to be deceived all over the world there's opportunity to hear the gospel. If you have not given your life to Christ or if you stop going to church, I've spoken to a lot of people. I go out of my way to make sure I use the opportunity God has given me to tell people about Jesus. I'm not ashamed about it. I go out of my way in a very good way. I pray every day that God will bring somebody who needs salvation. Heaven is real to be gained, and hell is real to be shown. The Lord has given us the opportunity to worship him, to serve him. You cannot look around the world around you and say, there is no God. Even in so many other countries, in the Middle East, in the remotest, people listen on radio. People are giving their life. Secretly, secretly, because they see the difference in their life. There was a Muslim woman. She was, I, I had a testimony in one of the uh, Christian stations in our area. And she's saying that um, when she was in the Middle East somewhere, I don't remember which city, and they are just telling her, oh, Allah will kill you if you open your hair. And then when she came to America and became an American, she found out freedom. It took her a long time to walk through that, to know that Allah, Allah, Allah will end Allah polish her because she's, wear, she's not wearing a headgear. Now she's free. She doesn't wear all those regalian. that makes you look like a masquerade. No. She enjoys uh, going to the salon to get her hair washed and putting her makeup, but she puts Jesus first. And I'm not knocking down anybody, but the Lord does not make mistake. If he says that only through Jesus Christ can we go have eternal life, you know, just whatever. Kneel down, prostrate, stand up, raise your hand. Say, Jesus, if you're real, come into my life. You will be amazed that God himself will show up. Jesus will show up. The Holy Spirit will fill you with the presence of the Lord. And all you need to say is, Lord, I don't know, but I choose to believe that you are the Son of God that you came on earth to die, to set me free from every shackle. Forgive me my sins 
and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. From this day forward, I choose to serve you. I choose to love you. I choose to live for you. I know you will restore things for me. I know you will deliver me from evil. I know you will deliver me from affliction. And I call on you the day of trouble, you will answer me. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Father. And right now, I thank you because I know you've had my prayer and that this is real. Blessings and honor be to you, Lord, for your love forever and forever and forever. I really bless you. I really honor you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, when you said it there, it doesn't matter where you are. We are in Boston anyway. So if you, if you are near us, you can come to our church. But if not, just Google a church that is spirit-filled. Choose to go to a spirit-filled church, a church that honors God, the Trinity, that believe in God the Father, God the Son, God of the Holy, uh, God, God of the Holy Spirit, that believe in healing. Healing is not done away with. And that's why I'm still alive today because I was very sick many years ago. And because I stood on the word of God and I believe healing, God restored me and still restoring me. You know, the Bible says through King David that many are the affliction of the righteous, but that the Lord will see us through. Do you believe it? Now, many of us go to work. We believe our employers. We go to school. We learn so many things. But how do we think the wisdom comes? How do we think? Is it just our intellectual ascent? Is it just our own making? Well, we better think while we are still in this flesh that God created us. There is an intelligent designer. And that intelligent designer is God, the maker of heaven and earth. I can never stop saying, how can you just like the Psalms? I love the Psalms. I really, really. I couldn't live without the Psalms. I couldn't live without the word of God. But daily, I read the Psalms in addition to other scriptures. It's a prayer. So if you believe the word that God is giving to you this day, and you can choose to believe it by faith, there is so much to teach. You know, I know a preacher on the radio in Boston. He's, long, he's with Jesus, but his ministry is thriving. So he tells us every time. I mean, he starts from the beginning. He takes five years to go through. And it takes a, quite a few years to nurture you and start again. I completely, and I agree, and I thank God that you will be obedient. Look for a church that is full gospel. Full gospel that honors everything the Bible stands for. The Bible is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is Lord of all. He created everything. And the thing about God is that He does not force us, He gives us the opportunity, like He makes this program possible, and wants you to get to know Him. We love you. If you have the opportunity to come in our area, please come and join us for church, even for fellowship. Let us show you our beautiful city that needs the church of God. 
You know, Massachusetts is a beautiful uh, academic city. Sports, doing very well. But spiritually, we are praying for revival to come in our spirits. We love you very much. God bless you. This is Overflowing Grace from Adonai Bible Center. Amen. OCN, Word of God to the World.